welcome to episode 2 of the Sandbox C Sharp tutorial series. So today we're going to be going over setting up a basic game mode and then uh, in a few episodes we'll actually start making something like a HUD. So we're just going to make this as a base. I'm on the wiki page here, uh, I'll put a link to this in the description and I'll also explain the wiki and IntelliSense a bit more next episode because they're very useful. So uh, we've already set up Visual Studio like it says. Uh, we get, we need to create a folder first, so in a uh, sandbox add-on, so to get to there we need to go to our sandbox directory. Once again you can go on Steam, uh, properties, local files and browse. And then we've got the files here. And then once we're in here we want to go to the add-ons folder. And then we need to create a new folder like the uh, like it says on the wiki. So I've I've done it a few times before. So let's call this. We're gonna, we're gonna make a game mode because you can't actually make an add-on right now. So uh, we're just we're gonna make a basic game mode that we can just code some different uh, like little things in. So we've created the folder. Then we need to create the dot add-on file, which uh, you can put like details in, such as the name uh, and shared assets and other stuff. So it needs to be. It's just a uh, no name dot add on. If you want, to, if you if if you don't have the option to change the extension, then you go up here to view and select and tick file name extensions. And then you just change it. Uh, and then we want to edit it. If you don't have Notepad plus uh, plus, you can just edit it with Notepad. I assume it will give you an option, or just install Notepad plus plus. You know. Uh, there we go. Right. So uh, we don't we we could just ignore this for now because we don't need to use any of it. But it basically allows you to uh, like request other uh, add-ons to be loaded. So we're just going to copy what they put on the wiki there. So now we have saved that. What we can do is we can create a folder for our code. It also lists all the other uh, different folders you can have uh, for like all your materials and all the content. So in the same my game mode folder we're going to create a folder called code. Then we're going to go inside that folder and we're going to create uh, a new a new file called game.cs. So this is a C sharp file. This is uh, the main file where all like the main functions for the game mode will be run. So remember you can change the extension there again. Alright, so now that we've done done that, we can uh, launch the game. Right now the game is launched. If you go into the, the ne next to the games tab, you have the local tab. And then on here we should see my game mode. We can't, we, we, I don't, it will, it will just error out if we try to join that right now. So what we need to do is we need to actually put stuff inside the code files. So go back to the main sandbox directory and we're going to open that solution I talked about in the first episode. And then uh, we're going to start, we're going to add some code, add the base, just the basic game class. This is what is created when the game, the game is started. And it can, should contain all like the main game stuff such as like assigning uh, uh, pawns to players. I'll go over that in another, well in, the, in a bit. So if we just copy this code, uh, we copy it. So this is our game class, and this is a game constructor. I recommend that you uh, learn a little bit, you learn some C sharp, because I'm not going to be uh, going over tons of C sharp, just more specifics for sandbox. So this is the game constructor. This is basically called when the game is created. So that's where we could put stuff such as like defining variables, other stuff. You know. So if we save this. We can now actually load into our game, but as you will see, uh, it will be empty because we're not we're not assigning a player to it. We're not we're not doing anything. We're not assigning a player when someone joins, so it's just an uh, empty camera in the world. So what we need to do, as the wiki says, is we need to create a player class, which we can then uh, in the game class we can assign. Uh, a class, someone who's join, someone who joins the server, we can, we can assign a player to them, and give them a player, so they can actually move around. So we're going to create a new file. Uh, go back to our uh, game mode folder. New file. We can just call it uh, player.cs. There you go. Player.cs. 
and what we want to do is we're going to write this code in. So uh, I'll just I'll just copy it and explain it. Uh, it's probably easier, but I, I recommend you try to understand it rather than just copying it. So uh, this is our basic player. So this is the player class that we'll assign to create for a player. I guess this is uh, the respawn method. This is ran when a player is respawned or first spawned. So we're setting the model. Uh, then as it says up here, we're giving them a controller. A walk controller is used for movement. So that's stuff such as like turning, moving forward, running, all that kind of stuff. Uh, like it says, you create your own. This is just like the default one. You could uh, take this out, create your own. It, game modes and sandbox don't have to be uh, strictly first person, third person or 3D. It can be 2D as well. Uh, here we have uh, the animator. This uh, is stuff such as like animating the run animations for the player. Just any animation such as like holding weapons. Uh, like, like it says again, you can create your own. Uh, the camera, third person camera is the one that's given in the example. We can easily just change this to first person as I'll show in game. Just change it to a first person camera. But you can just create your own cameras. You can just copy the third person camera and then just edit it how you want it. So we've got a bunch of variables here. If you hover over it, it'll kind of say, give you a little bit of what they do. And then it calls the base respawn from the normal player class. Uh, anyway, let's save that. So that we need to add some stuff to the game class now to actually assign uh, the player to someone who connects. Because if someone connects right now, they just ignore. Like if if this wasn't here, and if someone connected, they just wouldn't have. They just wouldn't be assigned a player until we give them a player entity to be assigned. So here we're going to create a pawn to assign it to the client when they connect. We can leave that in. So uh, this is the the new entity that we're giving the player. So we're creating a new my player class here. So we're creating a new one of them. Then we're gonna uh, we've got the client up here. Uh, yeah, we need to we need to what we need to do is we need to include sandbox. Otherwise, we don't have some of the stuff. Maybe we did it in that file though. Yeah. Right, okay, yeah, so uh, we're creating the player entity, then we're uh, setting a variable of the client uh, pawn equal to the new player entity, then we're respawning the player. So now if we load into the game, which we disconnect, now if we load into the game, we will have a basic player. There won't be anything else, this is literally a base game mode with nothing. No sandbox, it's just a base game mode. As you can see, we've got a third person, we can move. That's all we can do. There's no menus, no weapons. We need to add all that ourselves. So let's just double uh, recap over what we've done. So we have created uh, a game class, and then we've created a player class, and then we've given uh, a client who joins a player that they can control. And then we have respawned them so they're actually in. Uh, what we can try doing is we can try changing some stuff up to uh, make it a bit more unique. So what we can do to try and change it up a little bit, uh, like I said earlier, this is we're using a third person camera. What we could try is we could try changing this to a first person camera. So that's also one of the default options. Uh, we will need to uh, reconnect. So now we're, we've got a first person camera instead of a third person camera. And then we can obviously change that back. You can just use whatever you want. But uh, for the tutorial series, just keep it as first person. Because that's what I'll use in the rest of the tutorials. Anyway, so next episode we'll go over IntelliSense, which is stuff such as hovering over stuff. And like just it, it just makes coding a sandbox so much easier. It just tells you when stuff is wrong more and more. And I'll also give you a quick ex uh, explanation of the wiki so you can understand how to use them both a little bit better.